you may already know that the real numbers are pretty important for mathematics. It is not enough to only consider fractions, or in other words, rational numbers, because there are numbers like the square root of 2 and pi that cannot be represented as fractions. But both the square root of 2 and pi are elements of the real numbers. There is another reason why the real numbers are important. The following holds true in the real numbers and somehow uniquely classifies them. Every non-empty bounded subset A of the real numbers has an infimum and supremum. Where the infimum of a subset A is defined as the greatest lower bound of a subset A. Which means for every element A in the subset capital A, the element A has to be larger or equal the infimum of the subset A, which is a real number. And the infimum of the subset A is the largest number for which this condition here is true. Also, the infimum of A doesn't have to be an element of the subset A, which you can see here. For example, the infimum of the interval 0, 1 is equal to 0, and 0 is not an element of the interval 0 and 1. But 0 fulfills this condition here, and 0 is also the largest number for which this condition here holds true for. On the other hand, the supremum of a subset A is the least upper bound of a subset A. Which means, for every element A in the subset capital A, A is smaller or equal the supremum of A, which is a real number. And the supremum of A is the smallest number for which this here is true. The supremum of A doesn't have to be an element of A, which you can see here. The supremum of the interval 0, 1 is equal to 1, and 1 is not an element of the interval of the open interval 0, 1. The supremum and infimum of a subset A do not need to exist for every subset of the real numbers. For example, the supremum of the open interval 0, infinity doesn't exist because you can't find an upper bound for this interval here. On the other hand, the infimum of the open interval minus infinity to zero also doesn't exist because you can't find an lower bound for this open interval here. But in the case of a bounded and non empty subset A of the real numbers, the infimum and supremum always exist. This theorem is pretty important. But sometimes we just don't want to check every time if a subset A of the real numbers is bounded and non-empty. Maybe we need the infimum and supremum in a definition and just want to write it down regardless of if it is bounded or non-empty. Or in other words, we want to have the infimum and supremum for every subset A of the real numbers. So we don't want to check all the time if the set is non-empty and bounded. We just want to write down the infimum and supremum for every subset A of the real numbers. So this here doesn't work in the normal real numbers, but we can extend them by just adding two new symbols, plus infinity and minus infinity. This set is then called the extended real numbers and written like this here, and capital R with a bar up here. And you will see, when considering the extended real numbers, a lot of things will become easier, especially when considering sequences and sums. But first of all, 
be careful when doing calculations with these two new symbols plus infinity and minus infinity. Some things work out. For example, infinity plus infinity is still infinity because if you summarize two very large numbers, numbers that are larger than every other numbers, you still get a number that is larger than every other number. But other calculation rules doesn't work out. For example, um, infinity divided by infinity is not 1 and infinity minus infinity is not 0. Why? Because this would lead to wrong results. When infinity divided by infinity would be equal to 1, we could write it like this here. 1 is equal to infinity divided by infinity, which is the same as 2 times infinity divided by infinity, because 2 times infinity is equal to infinity. And now this here is equal to 2. And now we have 1 is equal to 2. And when you have watched my video about the zero space with the title We Can All Be a President, you know what this here means. It means nothing good at all. So, this here is not a very good idea because it would lead to 1 is equal to. This here is also not a very good idea because we already know or we already have that. Infinity plus infinity should be infinity. Um, when this here is now true, so that infinity minus infinity is zero, we could subtract infinity on both sides here and would get that infinity is equal to zero, which we don't want. So this here is also not a very good idea. If you are interested in all the calculation rules that work out with these new symbols here in the extended real numbers, um, you can take a look at the Wikipedia page of the extended real numbers. I think they have a full list there which calculation rules work with these new symbols and which calculation rules doesn't work. Such expressions here are also called indeterminate expressions. So just keep in mind that there are indeterminate expressions when working with these two new symbols. For example, uh, infinity divided by infinity and infinity minus infinity are such indeterminate expressions. Now let's take a look at the things that change when we consider the extended real numbers instead of the normal real numbers. In the extended real numbers, every subset A of the real numbers has an infimum and supremum, which is quite nice. So, for example, the infimum of the open interval from minus infinity to zero is minus infinity. And minus infinity is a number in the extended real numbers. The supremum of the open interval from zero to infinity is infinity. And infinity is an element of the extended real numbers. So once again, every subset A of R has an infimum and supremum in the extended real numbers. Even the empty set has an infimum and a supremum. Why? Because every number in the extended real numbers is a bound for the empty set. So because every number in the extended real number is a bound for the empty set, for the infimum we have to take the largest of these bounds, which is infinity. And for the supremum of the empty set we have to find, we have to take the lowest of these bounds, which is minus infinity. So, in the end, we have this nice theorem here. Every subset A of R has an infimum and supremum in the extended real numbers, even the empty set.
Okay, there are some often used theorems, especially for sequences, that change when we consider the extended real numbers instead of the real numbers. I will do it like this here. I will write the original version of the theorem here on the left, and here on the right I will write the changed version of the theorem when we consider the extended real numbers. So in R or in the normal real numbers we have the following theorem for sequences. Every bounded monotone sequence Xn converges. For example, the sequence Xn is equal to n is monotone increasing, but the sequence xn is equal to n has no upper bound, therefore it doesn't converge. In the extended real numbers, this theorem changes a little bit. Uh, in the extended real numbers, it states every monotone sequence xn converges, which is quite nice because we don't have to check. This bounded condition here, we can omit it in the extended real numbers. So the sequence xn is equal to n is monotone increasing. So therefore it converges in the extended real numbers. In this case it converges to the limit plus infinity, which is a number in the extended real numbers. Okay. For sums, we have the following in the real numbers. If the terms of the sum xk are non negative, the infinite sum of the xk exists if the partial sum Sn is bounded. So, for example, um, the partial sum Sn from k is equal to 1 to n of k has no upper bound. Therefore, the infinite sum k is equal to 1 to infinity of k can't exist. Now, when we are considering the same thing in the extended real numbers, we get the following. If the terms of the sum xk are non-negative, the infinite sum always exists, exists. Therefore, we don't have to check a single condition in the case of the extended real numbers. So here we always have to check if the sum is bounded or the partial sum is bounded. In the case of the extended real numbers, we have to check nothing at all. The only thing that is important here is that the terms of the sum xk are positive. If this holds true, the infinite sum exists. For example, the infinite sum of from k is equal to 1 to infinity of k is simply infinity, which is an element of the extended real numbers. So in this case here, the, so in the normal real numbers, the sum doesn't exist. In the extended real numbers, it exists. By the way, you can do the same thing for integrals. If you have a measurable non-negative function f, the integral of f always exists, which is also quite nice. Okay, now. Let's take a look at the so-called bolzano weierstrass theorem. It states that every bounded sequence xn of real numbers has a largest and smallest accumulation point. When considering the extended real numbers, this becomes easier. Because in the extended real numbers, the largest and the smallest accumulation points of the sequence xn always exist. They are given by the 
limit superior and limit inferior of the sequence xn. So the limit inferior of xn, which is written like this here, is given by the limit of this sequence here and the limit superior of xn is given by the limit of this sequence here. So the supremum of k is larger or equal n of xk. Now we should check if these two definitions make sense in the extended real numbers. So first of all, the infimum and supremum of the sequence xk shouldn't make any problems in these definitions. Why? That because the infimum and the supremum of sets, of subsets, always exist in the extended real numbers. The limit of these sequences um, exist because monotone sequences always converge in the extended real numbers. And these two um, sequences are monotone sequences. And as we have seen before, monotone sequences converge in the extended real numbers. So therefore, these limits here exist. So we have now checked that these two definitions here make sense in the extended real numbers because the infimum and the supremum always exist in the extended real numbers and the limits exist because monotone sequences converge in the extended real numbers as we have seen before. So to sum it up, in the extended real numbers, the largest and the smallest accumulation point of a sequence xn always exists and is given by these two numbers here. So the limit inferior and the limit superior. In R, um, we need the condition that the sequence is bounded. So a bounded sequence has an accumulation point. In the extended real numbers, we can always write down the largest and smallest accumulation point. So, I hope I could show you in this video that it is sometimes a good idea to consider the extended real numbers instead of the normal real numbers. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, so I can keep producing videos.